Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I hope all of you are fine, hail and hearty. Let's begin the YEP series that we have decided to do. Let me just check whether I'm live or not. Yes, I'm live. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So guys, uh, welcome to this uh, year end practice pain points marathon completion series. And uh, I'm Dr. Bhavdeep Ahuja. So allow me to share my screen and let's begin the proceedings. So I hope you can see my screen. Um, it is going on FB Live as well in the PSD community. And this is the only episode that will be live. Yep, I think it is here. Okay. So this is the YEP series. We started with the pain point surveys in June 2023. And of course, uh, the aim was to finish all the pain points. So every month we have, we have been taking webinars. And now it is the time when we ought to bring the curtains down or you can say finish what we have started. So let's uh, begin episode number seven. Before that, uh, a few instructions, which I'll be doing only in the part uh, seven or episode seven only. So all my presentations always begin with thanking the Lord Almighty who's given me much more than what I deserve. And of course, big thanks is due to my dad as well, who has been instrumental in teaching me the clinical part of management, finance, and a few other things. So, this is my brief CV. You all are aware of it by now. Won't be spending much of time. Just checking the audio. Yeah. I hope it is fine now. Great. So this is episode number seven of the YEP series that we'll be doing for the next five days. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 26th to 30th, strategically placed between the Christmas and the New Year. So that you don't, uh, you can say, hamper with your New Year celebrations. This is my webinar number 266. And of course, season's greetings and Happy New Year. So the wannabes for today, which I'm going to, you can say, repeat once uh, in the uh, at this point of time. So I suggest you to quickly get a pen and a paper. Keep noting the main points because listening will never help. Jotting down the main points will surely does. And of course, writing is the best form of learning. And those who make notes will actually make notes. So you'll be needing to post your takeaways for those who did not attend. So what are the learning objectives for today for this pain point series? So the objective is that uh, we are answering the pain points that have been listed in my WhatsApp community in June 2023. So 2022 videos are already there. Even a couple of uh, 2023 episodes are also there. So I'll strictly adhere to the scheduled time except for the first episode today and answer approximately between 20 to 30 questions. There were about 230 to 40 questions approximately split up. Some were common. So we have answered close to 80 in the previous six episodes, each of finance and practice and the remaining uh, 140, 150, 160, whatever it is, we'll divide into five and be answering 20 to 30 questions in each of these 90 minutes. I won't do a recap because the recap as we go on till the episode number eight, nine or 10 will take a lot of time. And uh, only the first episode, I'm going to do a recap so that people know what all queries have been covered till now. And this video will be there in the PSG group for the next uh, four or five days till Sunday approximately. After Sunday, it will be there on YouTube. So the objective is to complete all the 2023 pain points. I'll be doing detailing wherever necessary. So we have picked up the problems as posted by the participants without changing the words. So there may be a few spelling errors inside of the same. Okay. So please bear with the spelling. So what is the aim? The aim is to complete this YEP series from Tuesday, 26th December to Saturday, 30th December. The online lectures or the webinars would be 266, 68, 70, 72, and 74. So each day, 6.45 a.m., Tuesday to Saturday. Again, I'll be doing this detailing only in the in, in this episode, not from, from episode 8 onwards. Tomorrow, we'll straight on get away with the agenda or the queries directly without even a recap. So for your request, if you are watching on phone, please shift to PC, tablet, or laptop. 
make notes using pen and notepad and of course physically or digitally whichever way writing is the best form of learning remove all distractions around you for the next 90 minutes and of course your problems may get answered but learn from others problems as well and if my solutions don't appeal to you never mind uh, you can always uh, ask uh, anyone else so what have we done in the past just a quick recap so the guru, guru purnima day on 3rd of july we did episode 1 and 2 on teachers day in september we did episode 3 and 4 and on national holiday october we did episode 5 and 6 on october 2 2023 so a quick recap of what all queries have been answered till now in the previous six episodes so in the first episode of course we started with the introduction what are the pain points there are the problems which we all handle and they were categorized into various parts like financial productivity process support ethical not in our hand and maybe pain points for salaried and maybe broadly categorization to four parts into say various heads the baseline for this was the survey that we did in the community uh, we had asked for the pain points in severity order low moderate severe and uh, we shall uh, you can say start with the we started with the high severity order and then uh, by the sixth episode we reached the moderate severity level so what all queries have been answered in the various episode the first one was from query from surat gujarat as i said people forget which all queries have been answered or whether their query has been answered or not so that is why i am doing a quick recap only in episode number 7 from episode number 8 onwards there will be no recap so number 2 was from indore madhya pradesh number 3 was from perengalathur tamil nadu number 4 from meerut uttar pradesh number 5 from tier 3 city india number 6 from nagpur maharashtra number 7 from pune maharashtra and in episode number 2 we started with query number 8 from nayamati taluka karnataka number 9 was from pune maharashtra number 10 was from surat gujarat number 11 was from lucknow uttar pradesh number 12 was from tier 2 india number 13 was from trivandrum tier 3 kerala number 14 was from hingoli maharashtra number 15 was from surat gujarat number 16 from jamnagar gujarat number 17 from chennai tamil nadu number 18 from busavul district jalgaon maharashtra number 19 from bhivandi maharashtra number 20 from shrinagar j and k and with that we started with the episode number 3 and pain point number session number episode 3 with query num- uh, number 21 from mumbai maharashtra uh, then from 22 from mohali punjab then uh, 23 from panvel maharashtra number 24 from right now in pune but planning to shift to my hometown that is a rural area in rajasthan and 25 from vadodara gujarat 26 from delhi india 27 from again delhi india so episode number 4 we started with the query from 20 number 28 from thane maharashtra 29 from mumbai maharashtra 30 from nagina dual city of uttar pradesh 31 from new gurgaon delhi ncr uttar pradesh 32 from busavul district jalgaon club with 18 number query query number 33 from hadgaon tehsil maharashtra query number 34 from vadodara gujarat query number 35 from dubai uae query number 36 from tier 1 city india query number 37 from tier 3 india 38 from bangalore karnataka 39 from mumbai maharashtra 40 from village vani dindori nashik maharashtra 41 from ahmednagar maharashtra 42 from mysuru karnataka 43 from gandhi dham gujarat 44 from village guthaj mehmedabad kheda gujarat 45 from visakhapatnam andhra pradesh 46 from nashik maharashtra 47 from delhi india 48 uh started with episode number 5 48 from again they, this started with an anonymous query that i received from uh, endo haveli participant in my personal window so it was a very intriguing query which i answered query number 49 from lucknow uttar pradesh query number 50 from latur maharashtra 51 from ulasnagar maharashtra 52 from 
Okay, 51 was pretty long. 52 started in episode number 6 from Ranchi, Jharkhand. 53 was from Mumbai, Maharashtra. 54 from my town, Ludhiana, Punjab. 55 from Navi, Mumbai, Maharashtra. 56 from Mumbai, Maharashtra again. Uh, 57 from Shirpur, Nashik, Maharashtra. 58 from Kotayam, Kerala. 59 from Mandi, Himachal Pradesh. 60 from Vardha, Maharashtra. 60 was pretty long. 61 uh, was from Mesana, Gujarat. 62 was from Bengaluru, Karnataka. 63 from Tier 3 City, India. 64 was from Quadri Bonds, La Ville, Desclers, Mauritius. 65 was from Delhi, India. 66 was from Kandukur near Hyderabad. 66 continued and 67 was from Pune, Maharashtra. 68 from Mumbai, Maharashtra. 69 from Sonipat, Haryana. And uh, 70 was from uh, Jamshedpur, uh, you can say Jamshedpur, uh, Jharkhand. 71 was from Dubai, UAE. 70, with 71 number query, we finished the high priority pain points and then shifted to the medium priority pain points. And uh, we did a couple of them from query number 72 onwards. So from Mumbai, Maharashtra and number 73 from Thane, Maharashtra. And with this, uh, we, we are done with the recap in perfectly about 10-12 about minutes. So this was the last query that we answered. Query number 73 from Thane, Maharashtra. It is from the medium categorized pain points. I'm sure many of uh, the participants don't even remember what they posted. Even if they remember what they posted, they don't remember what they posted in the category, high or priority or medium priority or low priority. No wonder uh, they don't turn up for the sessions to even get their queries answered. So it's time to bring down the curtains to the pain points. And uh, I have always believed that uh, we need to finish what we start. So 26 December to Saturday, 30 December, each day 645 in the cold winter season. I am in the coldest part of India, in the northern side. So, but still finishing what uh, you start has been my mantra and I will be doing that. So with this, we, we begin uh, episode number seven and uh, episode number, uh, webinar number 266, episode number seven. Let's begin the pain point series. <clears throat> so disclaimer, there has been some mismatch even after so much, uh, you can say discussion, detailing, many participants always have been mismatching or you can say posting finance queries in practice uh, pain point form and vice versa. I have still, uh, I will still try to answer, uh, uh, sorry, I have still tried to answer the same without being biased and ignoring the subject title, pain points in clinical practice. So I'll be doing that. So let's begin today's session with the query number 74 at the stroke of 7 a.m. Query from Mumbai, Maharashtra. Number one, scared city of patients even after social media marketing patient flow remains very uncertain limited working hours 9 a.m to 3 p.m so the question is it is not about the limited hours six hours is a pretty much decent a good amount of time so social media marketing is for visibility it is for awareness kindly don't mix these two things with the we can say the patient footfall. The question is, it is a validation point. When I mention this thing, it is very categorically clear that uh, performance marketing or paid marketing or paid ads are one of the two go ways for increasing your OPD. But having said that, when I distinguish between the two, what is a social media marketing and what is a paid marketing? Of course, paid marketing happens on social media as well. But the organic way, the free way where you post content like I do is for the visibility part. It is not for revenue part. You may get, may not get uh, footfalls. That is absolutely fine. But just consider the reverse scenario that you are doing paid advertisement. Somebody searches for you online that who is this Dr. ABC? I've just presumed that your name is Dr. ABC. So who is this Dr. ABC? 
and if they don't find any validation on any social media any website or any other any other online presence they will automatically believe that uh, probably this is a newcomer he doesn't have any validation point so they don't get validation to prove them the in in that part so social media marketing is still a must but having said that you have to if you want to turn it into revenue you have to go in for performance or paid marketing the social media marketing the aim is pretty much clear it is for visibility it is for get you known you may or may not get work social media marketing may be equated if if you are regularly posting content and along with that you are posting your testimonials of the patients you are maybe before after cases but having said that how many are interested in that so the paid marketing actually targets those who are interested content creation is for those you want to skip you want to you can say see it is a personal choice so yes uncertainty will be there but remember social media marketing is for visibility and not for increase footfalls for footfalls try performance marketing i hope you get the answer so query from mumbai maharashtra lack of uh, communication skills uh, and confidence lacking clarity uncertainty the simple answer to your query is that if you know what you are lacking it is always to create learning goals for such things if you don't know communication learn communication confidence is always increased by increased work your work will speak for itself not in the terms uh, you can say of your advertisement i am saying your work will speak for itself in terms of your confidence the more and more cases you do the more and more practice you do you are bound to get perfect and of course if you lack clarity clarity is basically about goal setting what are your long term goals what are your short term goals everybody should have goals if you lack clarity regarding that sit down with a counselor sit down with a growth coach sit down with a practice consultant sit down sit down with a mentor who can guide you in that direction but if you just believe that posting your query and uh, you will get an answer or you get an answer in one line one two lines from me it is not possible if if you are lacking clarity cohesively then you need to really sit down with a coach or a mentor to decide where your direction needs to be and which way you need to go when you have to decide about the direction so uncertainty of course the uncertainty always will stem from lack of clarity itself because once we are clear about our goals we have a road map charted and then we have the resources for that also charted and once all those things are in order it is absolutely you can say uh, a no brainer that anybody or everybody would get the clear pathway to go where they want to go and achieve what they want to so goal setting is very important and for that you need to have a clarity and of course communication skills also can be improved nothing on this world is not doable not learnable if you have at least you have this much clarity that you don't have communication skills you don't have confidence this is not full lack of clarity this is lack of you can say partial clarity you can say at least you know where you are lacking you know that you don't have goals so that's perfectly okay it's okay to be you can say i won't say abnormal it is i won't call it abnormal but a little deviant from the normal that that is the only thing i can say but having said that you need to really you can say sit down and decide your goals and then decide the path accordingly so i hope you get your answer so query number 76 from bengaluru urban karnataka even after so many years i find it difficult to do uh class 2 restorations and end up charging less from patient in the fear of filling coming out i find it difficult to convince patients for high end treatment as i feel i lack the skill the simplest answer is if you know or if you believe even if partially that you lack the skill then it is time to upgrade your skills learn it from mentors who who teach restorative skills there are so many of them dr varsha rao in mumbai you can say dr shibu in uh, your part of the country shibu shridhar dr vishal gupta in the northern part uh, in chandigarh mohali panchkula and the tri city so 
depending upon where you are situated i can see if you are situated in bangalore get it done from a mentor uh if you uh you want to you can say come north side in rajasthan there is akshay uh who is teaching all these things so there are so many mentors who are teaching these things who who will who can guide you how to do proper restorations so do that regarding high end treatment the question is the class 2 is not a high end treatment it is a lower end or you can say maybe a medium end it is a skilled job but i still rate it in categorization of restorations only and restorations are a basic treatment of course some may differ with that and call a class 2 is a very complex thing agreed but then there are even complex thing than uh, like a you can say a molar root canal is a much complex thing than a class 2 i would believe then that is my personal belief you are free to differ from that there are further surgical tasks which are more deviant for them so that is why i have categorized a restoration into a basic procedure so if you feel that you lack high end treatment skills learn those skills unless you learn those skills you will not get confident you will not get confident you will not be able to pitch it properly and if you are not be able to pitch it properly to the patient i am afraid you are not going to have huge conversions in the long run so the question is that uh, how many times we think of even upskilling we finish our college maybe attend a two or three or four cds in a year by our local ida which uh, we can say are hardly for a day rarely with a hands on and we believe we have learned we have learned everything i go to so many webinars and seminars one day two day seminars i see participants sitting there without a notepad and without a pen or pencil in their hand they are just sitting like this listening 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 we are not sponges that we will be continue to absorb everything we are distracted like uh, anything in this world in today's world so if you are not writing certain things you are not carrying home anything that is why i always uh, before my presentation also i insist on writing the notes which are applicable to you so learn 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 and as doctors we need to understand that we have lesser knowledge of the business skills of course convincing comes in the selling part and selling is an art and selling needs to be done graciously not you can say in a cheap way so even that is a great art and if you can master that art you need confidence for that before and and confidence will come with practice and practice will come with learning and learning will come with mentoring or you can say getting coaching for whatever you are lacking in you lack in restorations you lack in root canal you lack in fmr there are mentors available for anything don't consider a mentor to be a guy who is cheating on you who who say sirf paisa banane ke liye baithe hain as people say ye log to sirf paisa banane ke liye baithe hain imagine that guy has worked hard to learn something he is bought the he is gone to buy the seeds grown the crop taken care of taken care of the crop and you can say harvested the crop and then you can say processed it and if you are getting grains or you can say wheat or you can say let's say the crop of chocolate so if you are getting chocolates in your hand directly you need to eat them by just paying them you are not going through the grind to learn all those things so just equate that because the mindset today is that everybody is out to make money every mentor is out to make money yes there will be dirty people 10% dirty people in every profession aren't there uh, cheap dentists as well and their cheap doctors as well cheap not in that sense of uh, price wise but cheap in terms of substandard or unethical or whatever you can say so there will be 10% unethical people in every sphere but don't equate that so if somebody is willing to teach you get a hand holding from them i hope i hope that answers your question So query number seventy seven is from Vasai Maharashtra. How to increase the footfall of the patients? I hate sitting idle with no patients. Nine years of practice and being an MDS prosto, there are days where I have no cases and I start getting anxious. I worked on my website, Google page, and it has improved. No doubts on that, but still there is lots to achieve and improve. The thing is, many people post their queries and. they don't even realize 
that their answer is in their query itself. Your last line is the answer to your query itself. There is a lot to achieve and improve. So get a clarity on where you are lacking. And of course, you're working on your website is a visibility part. Google page is your visibility part. Google My Business or Google Page, I'm not sure what you're mentioning. If it is a Google My Business, it is definitely a, a good exercise. If it is just a Google Page, I'm very skeptical about it. So yes, it has improved. It has improved your visibility. It is not the question of your visibility. Now, if you're visible, the next step for you is SMM, social media marketing. Of course, you can double it up uh, along with the paid marketing or do a SMM social media marketing for a period of around three to four months and then get into performance marketing or paid marketing. And you can say it is not that expensive. It is, it is dirt cheap. I would say in today's times when print advertisements have gone over the roof and out of the pocket or out of the, out of the bound for most of us. So I believe that uh, you need to consider performance marketing or paid marketing with a very, very targeted approach. But before that targeted approach, you need to have a clarity on who your patients are, whom you are primarily treating. Because once you need to go in for a paid marketing, you will be, you will be needing to, needing to, you can say, uh, you can say identify with whosoever your patients are. And unless you do so, it will be difficult uh, for you to even get results via paid marketing. So clarity is a lot important. You are improving, but keep on improving each day. Nine is, is a lot of time to have stability. MDS, non-MDS, it is not a debate, but nine is a practice. You should be actually by the end of 10th year, people achieve, you can say the success ladder. If I, I, I call it, uh, you can say, from struggle to you can say making ends meet to getting stable to getting success success is the fourth stage or sometimes you can say uh, we count it as the uh, fifth stage as well the first being start and survival are usually sometimes counted into two so start survive you can say somehow st start struggle survive and stable and then success and of course then the scaling part uh, is there so nine years, you should be at least in the comfortably in the stable phase. If you are not there, this is one way I've suggested you the online way. If you are not very comfortable, you can say spending money on that. And then the other way out is to do community outreach. Go out there in schools. You can say social organizations, Red Cross, BNIs, wherever you want to get yourself exposed. Unless you are exposed to the public, you are not going to be much visible and much fruitful in terms of revenue. So having said that, both the ways work offline and online. It depends upon you, which is more suitable for you. And I hope this answers your query. So query from Mumbai, Maharashtra, number 78. I want to upgrade and do high ticket uh, patients, but it is difficult to convince patients from my current database to take that leap. Opt for implants, full mouth rehabilitation. So also I've started charging more after attending practice management workshop and knowing about NPM, GPM. And it has helped me, but still patients who complain about high pricing and compared to nearby clinics who give free checkups and perks. So the question is, if you want to upgrade and do high ticket patients, the thing is you need to get practice and confidence first that you can handle those cases independently. So if you want to take that leap, the best and the suggested way is to do performance marketing or paid marketing. And people think that paid marketing is expensive. You can start with as low as 200 rupees per day, which is a monthly budget of 6,000 rupees. Imagine a print advertisement will cost you in big thousands, 20, 30, 50,000 rupees minimum. And that to not a very big ad. So a small, you can say, investment of 200 to 300 to max 500 per day. A 500 investment per day in paid marketing is a very, very decent one. You can start identifying with where your patients are. For example, oldies are present mostly on Facebook. Youngsters are present on Instagram. So YouTube is a universal platform. So you need to identify where your patients are. 
So if you identify with that, that my patients are here, you can do a targeted approach towards targeting those. For example, let me presume that your patients are, you can say middle-aged women between housewives, which are in the age of 35 to 50 years of age. So if those are your targets, you need to know where they are present. What are their interests? So of course, talking it out to them, you know, you can say conversing with them will, will make you know, almost everyone is present on Instagram and Facebook or either of them at least. So you can do a targeted approach towards that. And to take the giant leap, the question is, where do you want to start with? Now, if your target group is middle uh, age women and you want to target probably you can say higher uh, uh, you can say higher echelons or maybe you can say upgrade to the you can say bigger category of amazing uh, and breadwinning patients as i give the categorization of abcd amazing breadwinning convenience and dangerous if you want to step up to a and b then you need to realize that you need to have a particularly segregated niche which you market and it is a process you cannot just overnight do it you have to create that you can say you can uh, mm -hmm. an aura around that build up around that a few cases a few testimonials you can say rapid package it beautifully put it on your website put it on your social media uh, double it up with paid advertising i mentioned the budget and the categorization already with you and that is the exact way and this process usually takes around three to four to six months it's not a long process, but it is not a process that will work overnight. Yes, knowing about your GPM and NPM is surely going to help you, but patients will still go on complaining. It is an Indian's right to do bargaining. And if as an Indian, we can't do bargaining, we are not, we are not recognized as being Indian. So it is, it is their, it is their duty to do that. But it, if they are complaining and still coming back to you, you already know the answer that where do you lack or where do you, you can say, need to, you can say, improve. The question is, if something has costed you 2000 rupees, for example, a PFM crown, if it, if, if it has costed you 2000 rupees, would you do it at 2100, 2500 even? I will not do it. I'll prefer to, you can say, forego the patient rather than doing it. I'll spend time in, you can say making the patient understand about the difference between a good quality crown and a normal crown. I wouldn't say a ghatia crown or a substandard crown, but a good crown and a normal crown. But if the patient is not able to decipher the difference between that and wants a cheaper option, I'll let it go. The thing is, it should not hurt here that I'm letting go of the patient. That is where your conversion ratio comes into being. Not everyone walking through your door is your patient. So that is the way 72% is the ideal conversion ratio. So that means there will be 28 patients. You will say a goodbye or they will say a goodbye to you. So it is about not getting hurt and realizing that probably this is how it was meant to be and find peace in that. Okay, this is uh, the queries further continued uh, 78. Lack of standardization of pricing is a big problem as new clinics keep mushrooming every year and giving cheaper options to the patient. The growth becomes stagnated for us. The question is, new clinics are opening up fine, but how are new clinics pricing? How do you know that? Trust me, I don't know my pricing of my neighborhood dentist who have opened up in the past 24 years. I'll be completing my 24 years of practice on 31st December this year. I started on 1st Jan 2000. It'll be 24 years completed. I'll start my 25th year on 1st Jan. So I don't know even till date how much my neighbors charge. In fact, I'm sitting dead opposite to a Gurdwara, which has a charitable dispensary. I'm sitting about 300 meters from a mandir uh, on my left side, which is again a charitable dispensary and has a huge dental wing. Uh, about less than a kilometer on right side, another, uh, you can say Mandir having charitable dispensary, north side, just alongside that about one and a half kilometers, there is a huge charitable hospital. So I even don't know what they are charging. I'm getting my worth. So it is not about question of what options you are giving or what options they are giving. If they are giving uh, cheaper options, you can say, settle down, make a union, make a, you can say an assembly, make 
एक तरह से अपनी एसोसिएशन लोकल बना लो अपने मोहल्ले की एसोसिएशन बना लो यू कैन से यू टेक द लीड आई नो इट इज इजर सेट दन डन पीपल डोंट इंटरमिंगल विद देयर नेबरिंग डेंटिस्ट और देयर यू कैन से नेबरहुड डेंटिस्ट बट इफ यू कैन डू दैट सिट डाउन विद देम जस्ट मेक देम वॉच माय एनपीएम जीपीएम वीडियोस दे आर फ्रीली अवेलेबल ऑन YouTube जस्ट मेक देम वॉच दैट इफ दे अंडरस्टैंड द कैरी होम थिंग आफ्टर दैट परफेक्टली फाइन if they still want to burn and break their neck and back it's absolutely their choice so how to systematically increase salary of staff and associates how to create an sop for this and should it be profit driven like during corona there was less or no profit the staff did not expect a raise but eventually as the clinic started the expectation was there to compensate for the year gone by see there are two ways of doing it number one way is simply saying annually giving an increment that is a no brainer you don't your increase your charges every year it is your problem don't make your problem as their problem especially if your staff is dependent upon your income it is always expected that they would expect a raise and if they expect if they are living only on your income they are expecting to we can say expectation of getting a raise every year is absolutely fine because inflation bug bites everyone everyone gets more cost everyone gets uh, you can say more uh, expenses each year and the same is trickling down into our savings so they their expectation is nothing but natural and absolutely justified you not increasing your charges every year is non justified just because of the fear of the neighboring dentist charging less so if you are clear about that part that is one aspect increasing their uh, you can say salaries or in giving them an annual increment so there are sops for creation but then those are based on the bonus part sometimes some people link it to performance some people link it to multiple aspects like performance punctuality their behavior their output you can say their uh, workability their work ethics their you can say improvement in every sphere of life they are leading in your clinic if they are a better you can say a manager day by day they deserve it is so many companies follow this formula of segregating this thing based on various criteria so i deal that in the detailing of the advanced hr workshop where i give a break up of that but then that is meant for multi speciality practices where the staff is you can say 5 to 7 plus in number minimum minimum 5 to 7 plus of course 10 15 12 20 all those are applicable because every staff member is not doing the same job everyone will not deserve the same bonus and every because everybody is not the same on same salary and everybody is not doing the same job as well but for smaller clinics the simple formula just uh, for this or creating an sop for this would be giving an annual increment number 1 and number 2 linking it to profit for example uh, i'll just presume a number here your clinic is earning 1 lakh per month average again this is an average net gross aside just think that your clinic is earning 1 lakh per month just have that one figure in the mind what is your average earn suppose any month your clinic does 2.5 lakhs means 2.5x of the average then you need to distribute your profits it can be 10 to 20% of their salary depending upon how much you can do it remember if they are if they are working at 8000 9000 10000 of salary 10 to 20% salary will be maximum 2000 rupees maximum 2000 rupees and remember you have earned 1.5 lakhs more So if you are sharing some profits, you are actually motivating them. But then, having said that, there will be months. I've kept the number at one lakh. There will be months when the performance may be down. Maybe you are earning eighty thousand, but that does not mean you deduct their salary in that month. The salary would still be paid. The bonus is over and above if the clinic performs. So make it very clear to them when you are doing it. because it instills motivation for them to do better and better for your clinic the simplest answer is make your goals as their goals or make your goals as our goals 
and share the same vision and if the staff shares the same vision as you if they are happy and satisfied monetarily financially and it is not only about the monetary part i've always said staff needs to be controlled in four aspects monetary growth career growth work life balance and respect and care so these are the four aspects sometimes even we do all four still we lose staff members i'm teaching you all this i lost one staff member in the month of november who i recently employed in in may he was doing uh, you can say decently okay not showing a great career spike but then we still followed the four things made him do something career growth wise gave him an increment in the fourth month gave him a good diwali bonus in spite of he being only 6 months old still you can say treated with respect and care work life balance sundays were respected or holidays were respected they were given an alternate day off in in lieu of the, if they were working on uh, sundays so somehow still there will be 10 to 20% ba- black sheep in every profession so just because one or two people do this thing don't make it a generalized thing inke liye jo bhi kar lo bahut kam hai because they are not going to stay this is going to happen so don't make it a generalized feeling for every one of them so i hope this answers your query oh there is still left sorry so if there is a method to calculate and fix this then it would be great i hope i have already told you the method the annual increment plus if the clinic performs well add those things 10 to 20 percent of the salary you can add it you can do more also but this is the bare minimum that i expect i gave you the number if you are earning 1 lakh you earn 2.5 you are sharing 20 percent would still be just 2000 rupees out of that 1.5 additional earned so think 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 so if they have an instrumental actually in contributing to your clinic growth please 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 share your profits so how to decide the amount of professional indemnity needed and do we need to upgrade from time to time yes you need to a basic start point is 10 lakh rupees that is a no brainer usse kam mein aapko milegi bhi nahi usually 10 lakhs is the starting point so and as and when you go on evolving you go on increasing the procedures remember professional indemnity is directly related to two aspects number one uh, what specialty you are doing more number two how adventurous you are now specialty ki baat kare 50.4% uh, of medical legal cases are from surgical extraction or implant all combined 27 point something 27.2 or 26.8 or close to 27 are from endo which means these two specialties account for nearly 77% of all medical legal cases rest all 6 7 specialties combinedly are less than 23% so what does that mean if you are more of an endo person if you are more of a surgical person then you need to have a coverage of minimum 30 lakhs yes if you increase your skill set increase your uh, you can say uh, increase your all round abilities and you can say evolve with time you need to evolve your professional indemnity policy as well having said that consent is still a must documentation record keeping is still a must rarely company professional indemnity company would save you and create your records if you are not having these two they'll immediately reject your claim not everybody assists in creation of records mostly companies do that but there are many companies who will still believe that if records records can be still be created entries hai na entries to create kar sakte hai na lekin what about the consent the consent requires patient signatures if you are not taking consent then i am afraid to say that sometimes even the professional indemnity company may not be able to help you and please differentiate between a customized consent and a blanket consent what majority of india is taking is the blanket consent which is not valid in any court of law consent needs to be comprehensive and for dental scenario it needs to be customized so you must have seen there are multi page uh, consents in the hospitals they are pre printed ones there are certain procedures which give predictable results so they can be predictable results are predictable you can say format printed in that but for dentistry 
you open up a cavity you don't know what you are going to do you may end up doing a restoration you may end up doing an ipc you may end up doing a dpc you may end up doing a rct or maybe in between you may be able doing a sandwich also so there are four five options possible just for a open tooth also for a open restoration also open cavitation also so if you have so many options so many you can say options in one tooth which is just decayed how can you have a single pre printed consent even for that case just ask yourself if you are still believing that my blanket consent is valid patient ne bol de jo karoge aap zimmedar hai main zimmedar like that it doesn't work that way it does not really work that way so understand that i just gave you an example in this regard now it does not mean that you have to ऑलवेज थिंक अबाउट कि हाँ जी हाँ जी हाँ जी ये तो कंसेंट uh, में लिख दिया उसके बाद दिस इज ऑल वैलिड वी आर सेफ कंसेंट विल स्टिल नॉट गार्ड अगेंस्ट नेग्लिजेंस नेग्लिजेंस के लिए प्रोफेशनल डेमिटी पॉलिसी होती है कंसेंट इज अ परमिशन टू स्टार्ट सो इफ परमिशन इज नॉट देयर इन डेमिटी पॉलिसी मे ऑल्सो नॉट हेल्प यू ओके सो फॉर विजिटिंग डॉक्टर्स शुड द क्लिनिक टेक द कंसेंट और द विजिटिंग डॉक्टर और बोथ Ideally, anyone can take and consent. I believe visiting doctor should be the signing person. You be the witness of that consent. So, there was a question. Uh, you can say yesterday in the group uh, as well. Who is responsible by the principle of vicarious liability? I'm repeating it for the nth time. The owner is responsible for all the mistakes that the servant does. of course don't take it in literal term a servant or whatever so owner means the master of the clinic or the owner of the clinic and the servant means the employees of the clinic can be associate can be consultant can be you can say assistant whatever it is so it is a common practice now these days for you can say consultants uh, for uh, sorry clinic owners to get their associates buy an indemnity policy so that if they Commit a harakiri if they commit a mistake, not by choice, not by chance. Their clinic is at least saved against any kind of monetary damages, and of course, their own policy will also help. But ideally, anyone taking the consent is good enough. But I believe visiting should take the consent or sign as the primary physician, primary clinician, and you can sign as the witness. So it can be vice versa also. it can be you skipping that or your associate or assistant signing on the witness it does not make a difference the final responsibility lies on the clinic owner itself so of course aapke associate ko bhi kuch hota hai aapke consultant ko bhi kuch hota hai naam to aapke clinic ka kharab hota na remember that reputation is what is important it is not who is punishable or who is not punishable so i hope uh, i answer you all your five queries so query number uh, oh, st sorry still continued okay so what to do when a witness is not available is it still taken as a valid consent see witnessed consent is carrying always carrying more weightage it does not mean that a non witnessed consent is not valid it is it is still valid it is still valid the only thing is that a witnessed consent will be more carrying more weightage in any court of law so always prefer to have a witness consent rather than a normal consent witness consent means four signatures so sometimes patient will have a problem you want to start the treatment the patient is not there then your associate and an assistant can double up as patient's witness if the patient gives a verbal consent for that you can add a line over there the patient did not have any can say neighbor relative friend to bring it on and they wanted to start the treatment so we have they have themselves opted for a witness from the clinic itself so add that line this is how the customization works if you are doing that you need to add that line and the patient needs to know that also that you have opted for this then that you don't want to delay the treatment you want to do the treatment and the question is you are living far off ya aapke ghar mein koi nahi hai ya job ke timing jaise hai ki somebody will not come back so this is the way it does so how i have finally answered your question so query from hyderabad telangana fellow dentist charges less i am a senior dentist but not able to change the my hair swampiness 
how to avoid bargain sir if you are a senior dentist i would always believe that you carry a separate dignity and a prestige and you don't need to we can say merge with the crowd you need you must have created your own niche by now your name is all must have been now credible in your area so it it hardly matters to you how much your fellow dentist charges i'm sure where dr sandesh maiker is practicing that area will not be devoid of dentist but if he is charging 10x of what the normal dentists are charging and for the, with that i would say if agar wo hum soche to shayad jo newcomers hain shayad wo 0.1x charge kar rahe hain or what dr sandesh is charging so don't think of that in that regards so i would say that uh, you need to maintain your dignity you need to convey your niche and you need to charge now for your brand value rather than you can say getting into the muckiness of who the patient wants to do and what they want to do whatever people are doing it is their wish the lotus you can say blossoms in swampiness only so think yourself as a lotus not the lotus of the bharatiya janata party i'm talking of the lotus flower so don't uh, take me wrong so kichad mein hi kamal khilta hai is tarah bolte hain ki nahi so that is why you need to understand and respect your seniority you need to understand whatever you are offering as an experience and need to you need to charge for that without bothering what people around you are doing it somebody who has just begun his practice will not be aware of the cost so they are bound to charge less it is as simple as that the only question is whether we feel bad about it or good about it that is our personal concern so i hope uh, how to avoid bargain setting the context setting the things right at the start and of course doubling it up with the treatment approval form and the consent form mentioning costing in detail getting in return getting giving them a we can say a detailed pay structure uh, like a treatment approval form like a consent form i am working on a payment scheduling form as well so which i will be unveiling in my uh, consent workshop whenever i do it next in march or april so there are two three new kinds of forms which i can say have got an idea from uh, these pain points only and which i'll be designing and of course if possible i'll be sharing it uh, with the uh, many of you as well so uh i hope uh, this answers your query so query number 18 is from nagpur maharashtra staff training is an issue when having some important task or emergency I have to close the clinic i lost my father last month obviously i am yet to recover from that trauma filling this form is also difficult for me at this moment but i have this difficulty as i am not getting any juniors so a uh, couple of you asked me sir uh, why are you doing these five pain point sessions early in the morning that too in the cold winters you are in northern part of india it will be bloody cold the first thing is i am not doing it in road i am doing it in the comfort of my house the second thing is i am anyways an early riser summer or winter does not make a difference the third thing is queries like this somebody posted a query in june he or she said that i lost my father last month probably in may 2023 how long we can prolong the queries we already been answering whatever my schedule allows i've been doing it twice or you can say three times even a month i've been answering the queries we are take rajat is taking up those queries in the whatsapp community as well uh, on my request so we're trying in a way whatever way we can help it out he's taking all these topics one by one he has you can say lined up all these topics and we will be surely taking up in his way also this is my way of taking up these queries so yes that is why i say finish what you start we started these things in 2023 and that is why we need to finish them in 2023 first of all sir or ma'am i am very sorry for your loss that uh, you lost your father and we are acknowledging it after almost 7 months i would say so i understand uh, it is a great trauma i lost my father exactly 4 and 1/2 years back and i have still not recovered from that trauma 
fully i would say i still sometimes do get nightmares i'll be honest to acknowledge that so it is not a loss uh, a mother and a father is a loss which cannot be you can say healed up 100% in our lifetime again it depends upon how close uh, you are to your parents but uh, i'm just telling my honest feelings so so i'm not discouraging you that you will not get over this thing uh, i said not healed up fully but uh, it is again a personal choice how emotional kind of a person you are how left brain or right brain person you are it depends upon that also so staff training is an issue the question is always keep multiple staff that is a unspoken rule of clinics even for smaller clinics one and a half per chair is the gradual average so if you are having two chairs you need to have minimum three assistants we need to understand that our training is based on multiple aspects we have three broad sections in our clinic number one is the admin or the reception area can be different also can be segregated also some have a reception separate and an admin separate but i am just categorizing it into one so number one is the reception and the admin area number two is the csa area chair side area number three is the housekeeping area or the maintenance or the general dusting or the instrument uh, clean up whichever is uh, you can say needed in in, in our clinic uh, handsomely so sometimes our training is not uh, you can say based upon what we are doing we are trying to teach them all those aspects sometimes this does not match with their aptitude remember ask attitude skill and knowledge you may give them knowledge you they may upgrade themselves with the skills but attitude is like the you can say it is the ask is attributed or equated to a iceberg model if you remember the iceberg it is 10% above the sea line 90% below the sea line so skill and knowledge are above the sea line attitude which further has different parts personality as traits and motive that is below the sea line so the attitude determines that now if that person has an attitude of a housekeeping or a csa or an admin these are three different streams all together some people are not very friendly with computers or record keeping some people are not very comfortable with doing the instrumentation and the cleaning part they are very happy to help you in the chair side part and vice versa so what are you training for is the primary thing how many staff members you have is the another thing and then uh, how long is your training process how much you can say it gels with their attitude or their uh, you can say iceberg model is uh, again a different proposition altogether so think on those lines uh, you are in maharashtra you are lucky in that sense there are staff training program being offered in your state as well i think in mumbai uh, one of our fellow colleagues organizes staff training programs so if you feel that it is difficult for you give them uh, get them a training done from there sponsor their budget remember i have told you this thing staff retention ke liye four factors monetary growth work life balance respect and care and the fourth was career growth if you give them staff training in a professional way from the uh, coaches or mentors who are doing it you are actually giving them a booster for their career growth so think about it it will help you i hope this answers your query no there is still more so can't believe on some juniors to handle my patients so have in back of mind they might not be able to handle the way i handle my patients definitely they may not be able to handle the uh, way uh, you handle your patients they may be worse than you and they may be better than you both the things are possible you don't need to always underestimate them that they would be less capable only so understand that if you are uh, you can say uh, if you are looking to grow further in practice from stable to success to scale phase you need to delegate more and more as you grow now dhirubhai ambani or say mukesh ambani does not do everything by himself he has huge team now i'm not giving an example of uh, mukesh ambani deliberately but any any you can say one who has scaled up will not be doing all the tasks even i am not doing all the tasks uh, remember i am changing the slides and uh, i don't know whether this thing is 
you can say having more questions or not because i have not added these questions these have been added by my staff and i have not even gone through it i'm just looking at these questions for the first time so it is like a extempore declamation kind of a speech for me but of what i am doing it but if i keep on doing all these small things also by myself i won't be able to do what i do in a day you must have seen the kind of content i post on social media i still work for you can say and there for 8 to 9 hours in my clinic maybe work for 5 to 6 hours on the patient but uh, i'm there for 8 to 9 hours some work is delegated some work is with me so need to delegate more and more as you grow in practice you need to spend more time at the back end rather than the front end that is the beauty about this cast uh, this profession and the third is marketing of course marketing is an awareness exercise the question is uh, how frequently you believe that you need marketing if you believe that you need it daily absolutely right if you believe that you will need a marketing uh, every now and then just give give me a second just give me a second please so sorry for that break so if you believe that marketing is an ongoing daily activity i'm sure then you are thinking on the same lines as i think it is a continuous visibility activity if somebody believes that marketing is done ek bari ka ho gaya khatam then they are actually thinking on the wrong lines it is a uh, it is an activity which has to have a continuous presence in our clinic marketing is a awareness exercise it is an awareness activity and if somebody is not doing that activity regularly then i'm sure they are lacking in on so many counts so i hope that answers your query so query number 81 from muradabad up managing patients is easy but normally we are so overburdened with managing staff lab electricity bill nagar nigam hassles fire department pollution and so many other small jobs that you feel burdened at the end of the day the simple answer is delegation if you don't delegate enough then you will surely feel burdened we are not superman or superwoman of course women are superwoman but uh, men are not superman so they need to realize that uh, certain things are to be handled by certain kind of people and uh, you need to have a separate scheduling done for that if you are overburdened with clinic work then keep associates if you are overburdened with accessory work keep managers keep employees who can handle these kind of works if you want to do that also this also you need to remember the best of both the worlds is sometimes not that easy and not that possible so unless uh, you think that uh, your work is delegable or delegatable i would believe that you are on the right side but if you want to have the cake and eat it too i'm sorry that won't be possible possible you will actually burn out yourself very soon the problem associated with all this is the perfection syndrome we believe that what we can accomplish nobody else can accomplish true true we sometimes have that notion and we are very much you can say right in our own might to have that notion but the question is how long how long will you keep on doing or keep on having thinking uh, that thinking that i am the best and i can handle this work the best so there are people who can do better work than you the only thing is appoint able people who can handle your work where we do you can say inept hire uh, hiring or you can say hire incapable people that actually reflects on our own capabilities as well time and explaining patient see for any business marketing selling hr and different activities are there like uh, in dentistry also if we, uh, we if we consider 10 functions of business 
but people in business may have sales teams in our clinics maybe assistants and associates can help but most of the times you can say for smaller to medium clinics i'm saying for smaller to medium clinics most of the times the selling part has to be done by us we are the face of the clinic and we are involved in selling of course we may or may not be the actual doers of that treatment now why i'm saying actual doers of treatment because we may have associates for that we may have a visiting consultant for that we may have a visiting specialist for that so that is absolutely okay but selling part is one thing which we need to do it and we need to be a lot perfect in there i always mention selling is to be done very very graciously and not uh, you can say uh, cheaply by going over the top or overboard in that so we need to spend some time in that because this is the money making activity if conversion happens you get to do the actual treatment and you get the revenue as well so it is an income generation activity so don't disregard selling you can say or explaining the patient or you can say pitching your services to the patient as a service which is a you can say a negotiable feat as you grow maybe maybe you can have able associates who can do that on your behalf but then that will need a lot of training on your part as well so think about it i believe uh, for small to medium selling should happen by us or maybe you can say multi level clinics multi specialty clinics you may have a sales team of course dentists only not the mba managers you may have the sales team who is going to give you the results so i hope this answers your query query number 82 is from mumbai maharashtra we are a very senior and state of the art practice due to which we perform good quality work and charge accordingly but we practice in a dentist rich neighborhood with about 30 dentists and two dental trusts just on our road itself they charge very poorly due to which people find us expensive even though we are charging appropriately so we face attrition of patients for high ticket job which is the main pain point the question is if uh, if we are thinking about the uh, loss of high ticket patients because of pricing part i'm sorry i'm not ready to buy the argument the question is people may shift dentists for small jobs but they will shift or they will risk their life for a big job big task high accountability task to only those people who are skilled sometimes money yes for a few it may be but mostly for high skill jobs high ticket jobs money is not the criteria people want that ek hi bar karna hai acche se karo acche bande se karo will always have that mindset again i am talking of the majority and who does not practice in dentist rich neighborhood today you have 30 everyone in maybe about tier 2 or tier 3 has at least 10 to 15 again that is absolutely you can say huge for their town and their size of population so if you are having good state of art practice the question is are you marketing it enough are your patients knowing your worth are your patients knowing your credibility are you reaching out to them with proper resources are you able to display what you have these are the few questions you need to answer yourself if you have answers to these questions i'm sure you will find you can say you can say solutions very quickly and make adjustments accordingly where you can make a way that you reach out to your prospective patients reach out to those targeted patients who have high ticket jobs and who can rely on you for their services for their needs and you may be the ones who may be able to handle that see uh, don't get me wrong but being senior having a great practice is one aspect having a great skill is one aspect it is not uh, uh, given that anybody who is senior will have lot of skill also he may have a lot of experience but he may or may not have a lot of skill that is one thing we need to be very very sure because people always equate this thing 
wrongly. They believe that somebody who's senior having a lot of experience will have a lot of skill as well. So if you're senior, if you are having a great practice, you can say a well-crafted clinic, well-designed clinic, well-designed area, then, and of course, I'm believing that you have skill set also. You're doing good quality work, but you have good skill set also. Reach out to your patients, letting them know what you are. Not about the seniority, not about the state of art practice, but about the skill part. And that is best done in today's times on social media, on your website, through your before after cases, through your testimonials, through your patient reviews, through your Google reviews, whatever it takes. It, there is a combination of factors which is going to work. It is not that only a couple of factors, only one or two factors are going to work for everyone. If that was the case, Sabko blood pressure ke liye amlong 2.5, amlong 5 hi di jati. Telmasartan or so many other medicines. There are around 35 to 40 medicines for blood pressure or hypertension. Penthes are 40 dvayen. Kisi ko koi suit karte, kisi ko koi suit karte. Of course, majority is on amlodipine and telmasartan. But uh, if uh, people were suited to these two, everybody, every hypertensive patient would be taking these two drugs only. So people will have choices, people will have system, people will have their thought process, people will have their understanding ability. You just need to target the right kind of people who need your services and of course can afford your services with their deep pockets. So I hope uh, this again, this is the end. Yeah, I hope this answers your questions. You will not face attrition of patients if you are visible, credible, and accountable to your patients. I'm not saying you're not that, but you may not be visible and credible for them. You may be accountable for sure. So be more visible, be more uh, credible in, in their eyes. It is not what we think about ourselves that matters. It is about what patients think about us that ultimately matters in practice. I hope that answers your query. So query number 83 from Chamaraja Nagar, Karnataka. Advice, antibiotics and painkiller. Uh, this seems like a patient putting up a pain point. <laughs> Advice, antibiotics and painkiller. Uh, if I were to take it in a pain point mode, I would believe that patients asking you not for the treatment done, but for antibiotics and painkiller only and not getting the treatment done. So if I'm getting that correct, of course, there is no other way. The other way is that I advise you all the antibiotic based on gram positive, gram negative, anaerobic, or you can say, you can say whatever it is. So I've taken my way of answering the query. So the question is, if your patients are constantly asking for that, either you are not able to convey them the value of saving of the tooth properly, or your target group is wrong. I have always believed that if we don't, target the right population we get what is in in our luck so sometimes it becomes difficult for people to change the target group of population courtesy their location courtesy their setup courtesy their way of talking courtesy their way of dressing courtesy so many different parameters so if your patients are consistently asking you for advice of antibiotics and painkiller and they are not agreeing to your treatment pl plan probably you have not been able to or probably you have not been able to persuade them enough or may, probably you have not been able to, uh, you have not been persuasive enough where you can convert them for the treatment plan. So work on your selling skills. If you don't know how to sell, it's absolutely okay. Make that as a learning goal. Learn selling properly in an ethical and a gracious way so i hope that answers your query and i hope i have taken the meaning of the query what you want to ask in a correct way so query from thane maharashtra clinic income and expense sheet maintenance inventory management appointment scheduling now these are not pain points these are full-fledged topics on which I have multiple, you can say, media available in the form of blogs and videos. But anyways, I'll try to answer in short whatever I can in this way. So clinic income and expense sheet maintenance. See, the expense sheet 
is based upon your consumables and your fixed expenses or your assets i would say so some of the equipments that we buy are our assets some of the materials that we buy are our consumables repairs even for example somebody uh, gets a compressor repaired and uh, you can say a new head is put into there a new motor is put into there that is not to be counted as an asset that is to be counted as a as an repair expense only but uh, if you buy an rbg a cbct uh, uh, you can say an endo motor or maybe you can say a any such gadget it is to be counted in, under the asset side now the difference between asset side and the expenses the expenses are taken in full the assets are accountable for about 10 15 30 40 whatever they are accountable of the expenses in that year or maybe sometimes even half of this what is that this is known as their wear and tear value or the depreciation of that so you don't put in the whole charges for the assets or the equipment that you buy you put in only a portion of that which is we call as depreciation also for expenses or the materials that you have bought you put in full charges and maintain your expense sheet based on asset and in in that now clinic income when we talk of you may have various heads cash g pay phone pay paytm you may combine g pay and phone pay and paytm into one and then neft then imps again imps can be combined with the the g pay and all that so you make various heads where you receive the payments in that format and of course expense sheet i've already told you inventory management inventory is to be managed like a two bin system where you firstly need to know what are your annual consumption levels what are your monthly consumption levels for that material irrespective of the patients the average has to be put in you need a buffer stock for that for example uh, you have something uh, you can say for example uh, your glass anomer cement the 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 bond, normal bonding uh, you can say glass anomer gc1 for example if you're using gc1 gc1 anyways have been short but i'm just giving an example for you to understand this so you are using gc1 and you have two packs of that you are situated in an area where you are getting things after a lot of difficulty then you need to keep a buffer stock of that for example your gc1 with a decent work lasts you about two to three months then you need to make an order when the last bottle of that is opened up but if you're situated in an area a tier one or a tier two town where you just call up the dealer and it delivers to your next day or you can say two days later then you can have an alternate way of maintenance so inventory management is a task that is entirely dependent upon your consumption levels. You decide which things last you more, which things last you less. Appointment scheduling, of course, this needs to work out as per your ability to treat how much patients in how much time. I always believe strictly in the scheduling part, courtesy, you can say the principle of uh, the Pareto principle of 80-20. So the 80 20 principle says that we need to prioritize those 20 percent patients who are giving us 80 percent of revenue so if you are prioritizing those patients they are to be treated in your prime time they should be treated when you are the freshest and when you are the freshest you will obviously you can say make more money in that time and that for that you need to know how much task you are going to accomplish in how much amount of time that means that means that you are giving an appointments yourself of course your receptionist will schedule it your staff may schedule it but you are telling that okay i need this patient at nine o'clock i'm going to spend about one or 30 minutes on that patient keep a 15 minute buffer uh, the next patient i see is at 10 45 this is the way you plan it the assistants or the receptionist may write it but you plan it mentally first and of course in sync with the availability of the patient as well you know which task you're going to accomplish when so of course it comes with a lot of practice when you are verbally able to calculate so 
you can say i started absolute appointment scheduling from 2007 onwards from april 2007 onwards and trust me till date we are following the same system almost 17 years later as well so uh, it is it is a process which helps us a lot in increasing our efficiency and increasing our productivity so i hope uh, these two these three full fledged topics get a reasonable justification from my side query from madhalgaon district bid maharashtra charges for relatives and known patients it should be as per the clinic policy whatever uh, you want to i believe uh, there is nothing called as a 5% discount that is uh, that is you can say wo hindi mein bolte na shalgam shalgam ko punjabi mein gonglu bolte hain to mitti we all know dust to bolte hain 5% discount is known as gonglu se mitti utarna so means uh, you can say doing just the formality so if you have to give discounts for relatives known patients friends doctors whatever you can have various slabs of 10 15 20 now this is my advisable way you are free to differ from it in whatever way you want to so i believe minimum 10 max 20 so if as a clinic policy you want to have constant or same charges for everyone devoid of the category ki doctor hai known patient hai relative hai friend hai family hai whatever it is then even it's okay so as i said it depends upon you somebody may give 30% also somebody will give uh, 5% also my range is 10 15 or 20 for known patients 10 for we can say friends 15 for doctors and relatives 20 that is the way i segregate it can vary for you but that is the basic formula that i follow i hope that answers your query so query number 86 uh, from uh, uh, from uh, sorry it query number 86 from mumbai maharashtra staff attitudes towards practice when they become good at their daily operations they are not open to learn new things and stay laxed on following all the things that was mentioned to them at the start continuous learning that is why continuous learning is very important see uh, the prime example are these pain point sessions the maximum attendance that has reached is you can say 70 230 240 people posted their pain points the maximum attendance online has been 70 people have posted their pain point gonglu se mitti utar di done the formality apna ji halka ho gaya and they feel that they are done with it if you posted your query it is your duty to get it answered i have been doing a recap after i am done with about 80 90 it is not possible to do a recap of 80 90 questions just for those people every time so that is why i said i'll be doing a recap only in the episode number 7 not in episode number 8 onwards we'll directly start from wherever we leave today at 8:15 8:20 so see if staff is not involved in that you need to answer how much you are inclined to do an active continuous learning very very few people you can say uh, do or you can say identify themselves as a lifelong learner l l l lifelong learner should be the motive of everyone trust me guys your staff is a reflection of your capabilities it is a reflection of your capabilities of what all you are doing and uh, don't blame them for that because uh, they are actually showing you the mirror itself so obviously you need to set parameters for that let's uh, believe the other side of the story that you are a lifelong learner you are uh, the one who is inclined towards knowledge but your staff is still lax so that is where multiple you can say parameters like annual bonus i discussed in a pre- previous query annual bonus can be linked to their learning following their protocol whatever it is they can uh, be linked to that then whatever uh, you can say they are being uh, offered as a part of uh, their part is uh, in 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 those terminologies is very important so uh, it is all a you can say a collective game you need to make sure that the staff is learning continuously is imbibed towards career growth and follow the parameter there should be absolutely 
नॉन नेगोशिएबल सर्टेन यू कैन से थिंग्स पीपल बिलीव दैट अगर मेरा स्टाफ कुछ नया नहीं कर रहा है इज डिस ऑनेस्ट यू कैन से इज 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 चीटिंग मी देन इफ इज ब्रिंगिंग मी रेवेन्यू आई कैन इग्नोर दैट यू नीड टू हैव स्ट्रॉन्ग क्लिनिक पॉलिसीज फॉर दैट यू नीड टू हैव मल्टीपल स्टाफ मेंबर्स फॉर दैट somebody who is showing results showing growth needs to be rewarded more rather than the one who is showing lesser in that regard i hope that answers your query that the the thing is we need to understand i told you about the ask model the competency iceberg model the ask the ask mindset attitude skill and knowledge skill and knowledge are above the iceberg attitude is below attitude has further i can say uh, break it into traits motive and how they view themselves so you can change a person's skill you can change a person's knowledge you can't change their attitude it has to be something which is ingrained inbred in their work culture so if you are uh, if you are uh, you can say wanting to see them then this needs to be judged right at the time of hiring but if they were good enough at the time of hiring and have showed uh, shown that uh, show are uh, showing a change of attitude after a few months maybe a year then the best way is to sit with them give them a feedback at a one to one level ye nahi ki sirf aap clinic mein openly chillana shuru kar do it is not the way things work so give them a feedback on a one to one level that we agreed upon it the terms we agreed upon certain things this is one way of giving it that uh, i believe that you are not uh, performing your duties so i believe you to be too up to the mark but zamana aisa hai ki people are afraid of saying direct things to the staff ki agar kuch kaha to ye bhag jayega agar kuch kaha to ye bahar ja ke koi aur job labe dhoondega uh, so the the question is what are the options for us another option for us is the sandwich feedback the good the bad and the good you have been a very very loyal employee of the clinic you have been like a pillar of our clinic but uh, and you have been following all the rules diligently good but, but of late i've seen that you have not been coming on time and a couple of patients have also complained about it bad but knowing your track record i'm sure that you will be over able to overcome these shortcomings as soon as possible and uh, this is the least we can expect from an employee of your teacher and caliber again the good part good bad the bad sandwich between the two good parts so this is one way of doing it and if uh, they don't show an improvement do it again after a period of four weeks or maybe a month so if uh, they still don't show an improvement set a parameter set a time bound and get a rid of such a staff member that is the best i can suggest to you because uh, staff are going to change only if they know about it what they are doing wrong now the security part the the first example that i gave is if we say something bad the staff will run away the question is if they don't value you or your clinic they'll surely run away but they if they are happy in all the four spheres career growth work uh, monetary growth work life balance and respect and care why will they do it aap unki galti pe bhi unko pyar se bitha ke in your chamber one to one feedback de rahe ho in a very very normal tone or maybe in a sandwich feedback mode what more respect and care do will they need if you were reprimanding them in front of every staff member every clinic member then it is wrong then it is wrong on your part so i believe uh, that should be the way and i hope that answers your query okay it is 8:15 so we'll finish here and uh, i'll begin from query number 87 tomorrow morning 6:45 so let me just uh, go back and uh, uh, yes okay so thank you so much uh, for a patient hearing and uh, this is the upcoming project today evening tuesday 26 7:30 pm finance pain session episode again 90 minute session again the first part will be uh, the first part will be started with the recap 
but tomorrow for example uh i mentioned about uh about these practice pain points as well i'll be starting right away from query number 87 and there will be no recap and i'll be starting sharp on time at 6:45 as i did today so this is the upcoming project and this is the project which is uh, coming up tomorrow uh practice points uh, pain points episode number 8 tomorrow morning 6:45 am from uh pain point number 87 onwards remember the journey is still 230 240 whatever it is some points are clubbed so maybe around 230 240 are there and this is the upcoming finance workshop you will find a few queries uh, of finance where people are asking so many questions they want to learn so many questions you will see in the evening session itself but the solution is here if you want them detailed solution i have recently created a 3.0 version so many of you might not be aware but if you are not uh, this is the awareness exercise i'm not selling here just doing awareness exercise for all of you who are here so what is your homework for today i'm sure you may be having a quite a bit of learnings so develop this trait of giving back to the society whatever your takeaways are wherever you are watching it on the fb uh, group or on the zoom from tomorrow onwards you'll be watching only on zoom because it won't be live streamed into the fb page so and post your top 3 to 5 takeaways in the whatsapp community or in the fb group wherever you are with me you can post this on social media as well my id everywhere is dr bhavdeep so do it right away after the session cement your learnings writing is the best form of learning remember that so i'm sure there would be ample and uh, of course uh, this is my social media presence by my name only instagram facebook twitter wherever you wish to and on my youtube channel uh, as on 24th december christmas 2023 900 plus videos are already there if you are yet not a subscriber do subscribe and hit the bell icon you'll know that uh, i do keep on posting videos and from new year onwards there is a huge amount of content that is coming your way so if you are not a member of my facebook community again the community is by the name of dr bhavdeep or search phd plugging handicaps in dentistry so if you are watching on facebook and not part of my whatsapp community these are two groups that i am running since almost 6 years now in january end uh, they'll be completing 6 years we started in uh, jan feb 2018 So we'll be completing six years. So six years is a long time to keep them advertisement free and purely study based groups. So do give your feedback. Book is in big bad to be welcome in equal measure. And of course, I stop my share for questions from all of you if there are, and I unmute all of you if you want to ask any questions. You can unmute yourself. Uh, you can say uh, switch on your camera and ask your questions. thank you dr rohini thank you dr pankaj thank you dr bhavna thank you dr arti thank you dr shravani any questions facebook group or on the whatsapp meeting please feel free to ask so we'll be sticking to 90 minute sessions only uh is days uh, morning and evening for the next 5 days so there are no queries so uh, i call it a day and i see you in the evening 7:30 at for the finance pain points episode number 7 bye bye take care have a great day